So I thought it would be kind of cool to do a recap video of the weekend um, because I know something like two of you will actually care. Um, the retarded part is the fact that I actually just recorded one. It was about a half hour long. For whatever reason, the mic volume was set to next to nothing, so I went through, cranked the volume up on my end, and literally typed down kind of a summary of what I actually said, which took a little while. Um, so I kind of have my own notes to go off of, which will, I guess, help a little bit. But, um, you know, getting into it, I was going to wait until tomorrow to do this. I don't know why. Um, doing it now would be better because it'd be a little more fresh on my mind. Um, <clears throat> Comic-Con as a whole, it's fucking awesome. There's a reason it's as big as it is. There's a reason that something like 160,000 people attend. Um, I don't know if that's each day. I don't know if that's um, as a whole across the four days. But I mean, either way, that's just an incredibly insane number. Um, until you actually see that amount of people and be around that amount of people, I, it's just, it's astonishing. Um, just saying that number doesn't do it justice. Um, we went for three days. We didn't do anything on Sunday, which I would say is today, but at this point it's pretty much Monday morning. Um, we decided to skip it, just head home early. Um, there was stuff we wanted to see today. I'll get to that. Uh, the first day was Thursday. I only made it to two panels. Um, I I had the help of my trusty events guide that uh, kind of looks like a, a TV guide or something. So this stuff's color coordinated. It's you know blah blah blah. Um, so yeah, Thursday wasn't a whole lot. Everything, I should say most of the panels start at 10 o'clock. Um, the exhibit floor opens at 9.30, so you get a, a whole half hour head start on going and finding stuff before your first panel, if you're going to something at 10. Um, the first thing I went to that day was at 12, um, and it was something with Brandon. It was something he really wanted to go to. Um, I had nothing else to do, so I thought, why not? I would go with him. It was called Editing Comics The Boom Studios Way, which, if you couldn't tell, they are a studio. They do comics. Um, I'm not familiar with anything they do. Um, I didn't look up anything that they've done. I have no idea. I only went because Brandon was going. Um, it was interesting because they went over a lot of the interaction, the interplay between the writers and the editors, um, how they how they kind of hammer out uh, plot points, how they keep the flow going, um, just the general editing process. Um, it was interesting, but since it's not something that I'm looking to get into, you know, eh, um, kind of forgettable. Um, it's something Brandon does want to get into, so obviously, you know, that had a little more sway with him. Um, when that ended, the same time at this point, it's 1 p.m., there was a panel with Jack Black um, because he's he's producing a show called Ghost Girls, which follows two best friends who try their hand at paranormal investigation. So they're Ghostbusters. I, uh, oh, too bad Heidi and Angelica have pretty much no idea what they're doing. So based on that, and that's all I read, I don't know if it's supposed to be funny or like scary thriller kind of thing but I mean like I said it's got Jack Black he's producing um, some of the guest cameo appearances they're gonna have they've got Dave Grohl, Val Kilmer, Molly Shannon, Jason Schwartzman so I mean they do have some names involved so I would think it wouldn't suck too much I don't know. Um, that panel was gonna be at the Indigo Hilton Bayfront um, which Indigo's the name of the room um, because they couldn't pick a more complicated color name. Um, it's at the Hilton and it's on the Bayfront. Yeah, it's really hard to see how they came up with that name, but um, that line, that was one of the ones you'd have to get there a little early. Um, we wanted to, 
but especially since we went to the Boom Comics panel, um, we figured we wouldn't get in anyway because of how long we'd have to be waiting there. Um, we went ahead and got in line just because the next panel was Workaholics. So we figured if nothing else, we'll get into Workaholics at 2 o'clock. We did. That was awesome. Um, they all, you know, they play themselves in the show pretty much, and you can tell that they have a lot of fun with each other, um, interacting with each other, you know, joking, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that was fun. Um, the only other thing the rest of the day that I wanted to go to was the Ender's Game panel, and that was at uh, 350. That was in Hall H. Now, Hall H is a fucking nightmare. It seats... I've read different numbers, but I think it seats like 6,500 people. So basically, you have to imagine a line of like 10,000. And I'm not even fucking kidding. At least 10,000 people, because... It, Everyone's hoping to get into this panel or, you know, the next one, whatever. Getting into nightmares. So I didn't bother trying. Um, when Workaholics finished at 3, I spent like the next two hours kind of wandering the exhibit floor, took some pictures, um, bought a couple things. You know, it, it was fun. It's The amazing thing is you don't have to go to panels. Um you know, listening to the, you know, the big shots talk. You you can just wander around the floor um, or wander around between the rooms. Not between the rooms, but you know, the hallways. Um, the amount, the massive amount of people that that um, have some type of cosplay going on, um, just the people that you're going to bump into, not physically, but, you know, just the people you'll bump into and just start a random conversation with. It's amazing. Um, Friday... A lot of stuff we wanted to go to, but it was in Hall H, so nah. The very first panel of that was at 10, and to get into that, if you're showing up even at like 7 or 8 in the morning, you're probably not getting in. Um, certain panels, people were literally staying there overnight. Uh, the first one, the one at 10, was for the new um, The World's End movie, which has Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, Edgar Wright, um, we decided to skip that because of the Hall H line. After that was Veronica Mars, which um, after that was the one panel. There were a few, but I really would have loved to go to this one. It was it was Kickass Two and Reddick at the same time. I mean, not you know I don't know I don't know how it worked. I wasn't there. Um, but, you know, Vin Diesel was there, Chloe Moretz was there, the guy who plays Kick-Ass was there, whatever his name was, I don't remember. Um, it would have been a lot of fun. Um, after that was the Walking Dead panel, which I've never seen an episode of, but that still would have been cool. Um, after that was Game of Thrones, so that would have been a really awesome stretch to go to. A lot of, a lot of awesome shows, movies, people... Um, at the same time, in a different room, Ballroom 20, which is almost as insane as Hall H, but not quite so bad. Um, it fits like two or 3,000 people, something like that. I don't know the number. I haven't seen the number, but just guessing, something like that. Um, we wanted to get into the 145 panel for Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because Agent Phil Coulson is fucking awesome, and I actually want to see the show. Um, so we tried to get into that. Didn't happen. We stayed in line, though, because the next panel was uh, for the following, which I didn't watch season one, but we decided why not, because Kevin Bacon. Um, we we sat through that, which it was actually it was pretty interesting, or at least as interesting as something can be when you don't know anything about the show. Um, after that was the one, aside from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., it was the one that I was really looking forward to, and that was for Almost Human. Um, Carl Urban is the man. Uh, Michael Ely is in it. Uh, Minka Kelly, she's hot, so bonus points. Um, it's done by the producer and the writer of Fringe, so it's J.J. Uh, Abrams, J.H. Wyman, and more acronyms, um, or initials. Um, we got to watch the entire pilot, the, the entire first episode, and it, it was amazing. It, watching it, it just looks and feels 
like it was done by the Fringe people. And and so I'm really looking forward to it. Fringe was one of my favorite shows. I wish it went longer than five seasons, but people are retarded and didn't watch it, and it didn't get as good ratings as it should have, and it had a really high budget, so... Mm. Um, one of the questions during the Q&A, somebody asked if like some of the Fringe crew would maybe do cameos on the show, and they were kind of vague. Like It kind of sounded like maybe they didn't want to come out and say, oh, they'd want too much money. It... it like it almost sounded like a yes, but not a very confident yes. So it kind of made me wondering, you know, was it the money thing or what? Um, after that, in the same room, we stayed in ballroom twenty, um, which is something you can do. You, you, when a panel's over, you don't have to leave. You can stay in the same room all day if you want. If there are back to back to back panels, however many in a row, you can literally be there the entire time, which sucks for some people because if you're getting in line a little later in the day you might be out of luck because, oh, sorry, the room's still fucking half full from the last show, so you're not on getting in. Um, the next panel was the TV Guide fan favorites, which they had people from The Walking Dead, um, Vampire Diaries, the originals, like shows that I've either never heard of or don't watch, so I'm just like, who the fuck are these people? Uh, but Clark Gregg was there, which was fun because, um, you know, obviously the whole Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. thing, but he really enjoyed fucking with the crowd, um, just mentioning Avengers. And you could tell he was doing it on purpose, not just like, oh, I'm going to talk about how the show relates to the Avengers. He would just almost just out of nowhere just be like, oh, the Avengers. And, you know, everyone starts going wild. You could tell I felt like a lot of people were there um, just for him and for the show. I don't know if that's because I just wasn't paying attention to a lot of the other reaction for some of the other people. Um, like the younger girls for like the vampire werewolf shit, I, I don't fucking know. The next panel, same room, was Joss Whedon. Um, if you don't know who he is, you should look him up right now, otherwise I hate you. Because um, you need to know. It was mostly a Q&A, um, it wasn't he didn't show anything, it was just him up on stage just talking the whole time, which is totally cool because he seems like he loves what he does, even though he takes on too many projects. Um, you know, he's Marvel signed him. He's basically the head of everything related to Marvel. If, uh, Marvel. Um, if he's not the producer or whatever in a movie, he still oversees the entire thing. Um, he he likes the interaction with the fans, and he's he's funny. He's a little sarcastic, so I love that. Obviously, um, one of my favorite moments was something that I put on Facebook. But if you didn't have to see it, someone asked him if if he could describe Avengers two in one word, what would it be? And you know, obviously, that person. And then once we hear the question, we're looking for you know, oh, it's amazing or, or whatever. Just dead. He just kind of stands there and he's like, "Movie," and you know the way it happened. Just you know, everybody fucking hilarious. Um, but he just deadpans it, and it, and it was great. Um, the other stuff we wanted to go to was going to be at four o'clock, five o'clock. That was going to be Bob's Burger Burgers. They Bob sells more than one. Um, and Archer. Those were going to be at the Indigo Hilton Bayfront, where we saw the Workaholics panel. Now, that conflicted with Almost Human, and we wouldn't have been able to get back to Ballroom 20 to see Joss Whedon, because Archer was done at 6. Joss Whedon started at 6.15. Um, we would have been able to walk there in time, but because the lines are so fucking huge, it wouldn't have happened. So, we had to pick which one we wanted. So, you know, we balanced between what we thought we'd be able to get into, yada, yada, yada. So we went with the following Almost Human, all that, obviously. Um, that was for Friday. Um, Joss Whedon was done at 7.15. After that, I, I hung out for a little bit, just walked around, took some pictures on my way out, went back to the room, into the night. Um, Saturday, there wasn't a whole lot we wanted to see. Um, or there was, but stuff that, you know, no chance in hell, even if hell froze over, there's no chance we we're going to get in. Um, starting at noon, going to 315, it was four straight panels. It's Futurama, The Simpsons, 
Family Guy, and American Dad. We both would have fucking loved to be there for all four of those. But, because it was Ballroom 20, had we shown up, you know, whenever, because the lines were so fucking insane, we probably would have been lucky to get in by the fourth panel um, for American Dad. So, you know, we're like, we're not going to waste that much time. We wanted to try and hit more stuff. Um, so we skipped it. Um, other shit I wanted to see at 1045 was a Warner Brothers uh, Legendary Pictures panel, which I think that is the panel where they showed um, little clips or a trailer or something from the new Lego movie coming out, which I guess is combining like the Lego Star Wars and Lego Indiana Jones and other Lego movies they've done. I don't know. I've never watched them. Um, they also showed a trailer from the new Godzilla movie, which, if you remember the one they made in 1998, and my god, why do you remember that? Because it was fucking horrible. Um, this one, from what I've heard, looks looks like it'll be more like old school Godzilla, um, as opposed to whatever the fuck the newer one was. Um, at 1 p.m. there was a, a 25th anniversary panel for The Tick. Um, it was only supposed to be like based on the comic, and I would have gone if the voice actors were going to be there because, you know, I love the cartoon, not like the comic was bad or something, but I would have liked to hear the, the, the voice actors. Well, Brandon went because, the, you know, the comic, he, he wants to get into comics, so... Um, yeah, I guess who was sitting in the audience as a surprise. Oh, the voice actors, so, yeah, whatever. Um, at 135 was the Hunger Games panel, which, yeah, that wasn't going to happen unless you stayed overnight in a sleeping bag on the sidewalk outside. No. Um, I mean, as much fun as it would have been to see Jennifer Lawrence and Josh Hutcherson and, and Liam's hand, Liam... Thor's brother, um, and the new trailer, um, Lenny Kravitz, uh, no, no thank you, it, that just, no, uh, if 415 was the 20th Century Fox panel, that was in Hall H, uh, so again, long fucking line, not gonna happen, um, I think that's when they showed the X-Men and, and, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and they had the entire crew for both, um, the Guardians of the Galaxy, they're filming in London, and they literally flew them out just for this. Like, not even taking a break, just fly here and fly back. Um, so, I mean, you know, they had, for Guardians of the Galaxy, there was Chris Pratt and uh, Zoe, Zoe Saldana, Sol, Neytiri. Um, you know, X-Men, I mean, Jesus, they had Peter Dinklage and Hugh Jackman, and he was there for the Wolverine movie, too. Uh, Tinklage Jackman, um, Halle Berry, Jennifer Lawrence was there too because she's Mystique. Um, I can't even think who else is in uh, James McAvoy, Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart. Um, all those people were there. That would have been just fucking amazing. But you know, all eight, and you know, I didn't want to sleep on the sidewalk. Um, the only other panel um, at 6 o'clock was the Thor and Captain America panel, which, um, if you haven't seen the video of the surprise appearance during the Thor panel, I'll link it in the description, and I feel like a, a professional YouTuber. Um, and Captain America was a very so-so panel, from what I've heard. Like, uh, I, I don't know if... If people meant like the movie doesn't look good, or if they just weren't impressed with how the panel was handled, I got a lot of mixed things coming in from that one. Um, so yeah, I didn't do a lot on Saturday. Um, so since there wasn't really anything I wanted to go to, or anything that I thought I would get into, I went in pretty late, um, especially because the buses that are supposed to uh, NBC sponsored some shuttle buses to go around to all the hotels, pick people up, um, which was super awesome. Um, the buses were supposed to be by like every 15 to 20 minutes, something like that. And I ended up waiting for 45. And then the bus driver uh, wasn't from San Diego. 
He's from somewhere north of San Diego. So he thought it'd be cool to take a longer route because this way you don't have to stop in traffic. You can keep moving, except for the part that it takes longer to get there. So thank you, bus driver, for it taking me an hour and a half to go from the hotel to the convention center, which was, uh, you know, five miles. Um, so I wandered the floor. I stumbled across a collectibles booth. Um, they do a lot of work with Marvel. Um, I may have gotten something that is awesome and cost more than like five dollars, but it's signed by Stan Lee. And if you don't know who Stan Lee is, you should probably just kill yourself right now. After that, um, I had to get to the panel on Watch Dogs. Um, which is a new game by Ubisoft. Um, you play a guy, you're basically a hacker, and just by using your phone, you can hack into pretty much everything around you. Um, you can hack into the police cars, you can hack into traffic lights, you can, um, if you hack into people's phones, you can read their texts, you can listen to their phone calls. Um, it looks amazing. Um, the panel was called Does Privacy Exist? I already wanted to go to it, uh, which I forgot about, so thankfully Brandon reminded me, uh, along with the fact that Aisha Tyler was the moderator. And if the name rings a bell or, or whatever, she is Lana. Lana from Archer. So that was fun. Um, she was really funny. She kept the panel moving, um, which was big, because the two guys that were there were programmers or story writer or something, and they weren't exactly like big and comedy. So the fact that she was there, you know, she kept things light, kept things moving pretty good. Um, there was supposed to be a third guy there on the panel uh, from, from K Kapersky, K whatever the antivirus software is called, um, like from their Moscow. I guess that's where they're based out of. I have no idea. But the guy was going to be coming from Moscow, but apparently his visa was rejected because of the whole Snowden thing in Moscow. That's great, but, um, so the whole, like, security and, and hacking thing that the panel would have entailed, a lot of that kind of stayed in Moscow. Um, they, they went over, like, if you use Google, if you have Google Now on your phone, um, between the searches that you do, um, your GPS when you're using maps, whatever. Google knows so much more about you than you think and how scary it would be to find out how much they know. And that's kind of what the game's about, showing um, the trailer for it. They, they based the game in Chicago because right now there are over 22,000 cameras that the city of Chicago uses to monitor people, and that's kind of fucking scary. You might feel like it's a good idea. I'm not going to get into that. Um, um, and, and in the trailer, they say, okay, you know, yeah, all of this is, is controlled by one computer, but who controls the computer? So it's about you know, what can this one guy do, you know, if this guy were to take over the computer, what can he do um, with strangers, what can he find out about the strangers, because he's such a good hacker and can get into anything. Um, that was over at 7. Uh, I left it a little early before when the Q&A started, because whatever, um, mainly so I could get to the 715 panel that I wanted to get to, which was Kevin Smith. Um, Brandon was already in line for it, so that meant I got to kind of cut in line a little bit, and that's always fun. Um, I didn't think we'd get in because there were so many people in line. I thought we were just going to be standing there, the show would start, and then we'd, you know, be like, all right. Um, we actually got in, so that was a neat surprise. Um, he was amazing. He was he was at least as, as interesting and engaging, um, as funny, genuine, uh, as Joss Whedon was, if not more so. I mean, he, he was just, he was awesome. Um, I mentioned on Facebook the very first question during the Q&A. I shouldn't say the first one because 
we got in like 15 minutes after it started and I think they fucked up letting people in because when we got in 15 minutes early, the place was only like a third full. Um, and it was like, so that was 7.30. So it, it was like 7.45 or 8 o'clock before the place was like a half or more full. But the first question that we eventually heard, this guy brings his girlfriend up. And he's like, oh, hey, Kevin, like I'm so-and-so. And this is my beautiful and shy wife, whoever. And so his question was something like, um, you know, she's not like into comics and, and stuff like that, like the same stuff I am. So how did you know your wife was the one? Because his wife isn't like Miss Comic Book either. And, and Kevin's answer was just, well, she fucked me. So hi, welcome to the relationship. And, you know, so that, that was fucking awesome to hear. Um, he went on about, yeah, how she's not into comics, but you know, you, you still, you just, you find ways to make it work. And they went back and forth a little bit. And so Kevin finally at one point is like, you know, this is kind of a weird thing to talk about at Comic-Con. And I already had a feeling where this was going. And so sure enough, dude's like, all right, well, Kevin, would you do us the honor of marrying us? And, you know, so Kevin's standing there just like, what the fuck? Um, you know, finally at this point, there's like 3,000 people in there. Um, it's on all the screens. So everyone sees this. Um, you know, she's like, mm -hmm, you know, and then um, she hugs him. We don't hear anything because she's fucking super quiet. So we're all kind of like, ah, and Kevin's standing up there like, I guess that's a yes. And then dude says yes. And then everybody goes insane. What to do? It was, it was fun to watch. It was cool. Um, some people think shit like that's corny, but everyone has their own thing. Everyone has their own way of doing stuff. And that's something that Kevin touched on during the panel. Um, the fact that everyone at Comic-Con has something in common, it, it's, he called it a, a cultural mosaic. And, you know, that's something like everyone thinks, oh, like a proposal, like, oh, it should be a certain way. It should be this. And if it's not this, then, oh, you're doing it wrong. Um, he was super funny. And, and, you know, there's obviously, there's a reason so many people like him. And the fact that he's just so, like, he's just so cool and calm. And, and um, James Silent Bob are going to be in the new Plants vs. Zombies game, which I think the trailers are already online, um, which if I remember when I put this up, I'll... Um, he's, he's starting a movie, the Kevin Smith Movie Club, which is going to be his own production company or something. I don't know. Um, but it's going to be kind of like he, he's focusing on like small indie films. Um, like not necessarily a make-it-yourself thing, but just something that's going to be a low-budget whatever. And so he played this trailer for this movie called The Dirties. And it's about kids in high school who get bullied by a group of bullies called The Dirties. Um, and he said, the way he put it is, you're either going to identify with the aggressors or the aggressees, which I think is a word or whatever. Um, and it's kind of a found footage style, so it's it feels like Blair Witch in that regard, but totally not the same movie. Um, but in regards to like identifying, um, you know, if you were if you were a bully before earlier in life, you might identify with the dirty side, or maybe kind of understand how the people who did get bullied how they felt um, back then, and maybe you'll feel like an asshole. Um, or if you were one of the ones bullied once upon a time, you'll relate to that side. Um, look it up yourself. I don't know if there's anything online, and that's one thing that you can do. Um, that was it, because we didn't do anything uh, today. There, there, was, there was The Walking Dead. There was Doctor Who, the 50th anniversary. Um, there was a Sons of Anarchy panel. Um, but they were in all, all in Hall H, so fuck that. Um, we left town kind of early, decided to get home at a decent time because it's a nine-hour drive. 
Um, but, you know, overall, even though we only really went three of the four days, it was so much fun. Um, the pre-registration starts next month um, sometime. So, I mean, guaranteed we're going to do it again. Um, definitely doing it again. Hopefully it becomes an annual thing for us. We can get more people to go, um, get a big group. That'd be a lot of fun. Maybe get a hotel that's a little closer so I don't have an hour and a half wait to get there depending on who my bus driver is. Um, and... And I mentioned, uh, like, it's a five-mile drive or, or whatever. And, you know, it's like, oh, well, why not actually drive? Well, parking is fucking insane. Like, if you've ever been to San Francisco or one of those huge cities, um, even though it's San Diego and it's, you know, it's a little more low-key, whatever, it, it's still the parking is just fucking insane. It's like $40 a day. And if you're there for four days, I'll do the math for you, that's $160. So, no. Um... Saturday, though, coming back from the con, that was the first day for baseball since the All-Star break, and the convention center is right across from Petco Park, home of the San Diego Padres, boo. Um, but it was fun because there was actually a game going on while I was going back, so it was just kind of fun to hear, you know, the noises and, and whatnot from right across the street. Like, there's a baseball game going on right there, which, you know, not obviously that big of a deal, but it was still really cool to see. Um, man, I think that's it. If there is anything else, comment or ask me in any of the ways that you might know how to ask me.